Santa Maria, go ahead, Howard. Just send me down. There's something rather special about this trip. You can feel the throb in the air. Left easy. Passengers are all excited. Pull ahead. Half on the, uh, half ahead on the San Pedro. Mr. Bolger. Yes, sir. You get the captain for the and this year, Mrs. Hornback, mm -hmm. Mrs. Graham, mm -hmm. repeat passenger, you know, this too. Yes. Mrs. Uh, Hornback is repeat also. I guess it's a sense of history to be retracing perhaps the greatest sea voyage ever made. A cruise to the bottom of the world around South America through the Straits of Magellan is a waterway excursion to the southernmost point of the Western Hemisphere. Yet, it is more than just a passage from Atlantic to Pacific. It is a trip back into time, almost unchanged through 400 years, when man made his first journey around the world. The pilot's away. Pilot away, sir. What time do you have there? Sir, it's 28 minutes past the hour. We'll take departure for the strait at 0830. Departure 0830 and set course for the straits. Aye, aye, sir. When Magellan set out, he had no idea what he was going to see. There was very little known about that part of the world. No one had dared to go that far south before. This is an achievement that has never been equaled. You go through in the daytime, do you? you well, it's, it's from 30 to 36 hours oh, to I go see. through. So you get a good... Uh, so you, you know... Both day and night. You get day and night. And isn't it a wonder any boats got through there in the old days? Took them about 38 days, and we got through in, say, 38 hours. You know? okay. But they were exploring it and charting it, and we were talking today that uh, you can almost equate this to the astronaut landing on the moon. Still hungering for the New World claims in the early 16th century, Renaissance Spain commissioned Captain General Ferdinand Magellan to find westward passage to the wealth of the Orient, a route that would avoid circling the continent of Africa. After months of outfitting five ships, Magellan and 277 men left the port of Seville. The ship's log begins, 20 September 1519, we embark into the Sea of Mares. He had no charts. He was making the charts as he progressed. The only thing they had was a compass. We have a gyro compass. What's your heading, quartermaster? Uh, 172, sir. We have uh, Loran, which is long-range navigation. We have radar. 165, sir. He went from an assumed position to an assumed position. I'm sure that there were days that he barely made 48 miles. Land was found where sea was charted, and sea where land was marked. Several months across the Atlantic, Magellan reached the Brazilian coast and turned south to search for the passage. He took false leads up South American rivers and narrow channels which turned into landlocked bays. At Rio de Janeiro, his ships were already leaking and his stores almost depleted. He anchored to replenish supplies, repair the damage, and plan the journey further south where charts of land and sea were even more incomplete. Uh, calling Rio de Janeiro pilots, Rio de Janeiro pilots, this is Santa Maria. We should be at the pilot station in about uh, one hour. Uh, this is the Santa Maria Kilo Alpha Foxtrot Charlie, clear with Rio de Janeiro pilots. Over and out, thank you. We're like a little island moving from port to port. Passengers get on and passengers get off. We load cargoes and we discharge cargoes. On this present trip, we have many types of manufactured goods and fruit. We bring uh, pears and uh, grapes and apples to Venezuela and to Brazil. We bring back fruit again in the form of orange juice concentrate and of course coffee from Brazil and Colombia. Get this guy more charge me. Magellan hoped to trade fish hooks, knives, bells and bracelets in the Orient for spices to preserve foods and precious metals to be turned into coin in the financial capitals of Europe. The launch is clear. All right, pull away. Pull ahead. After repairing his ships and bringing on fresh supplies, Magellan continued his search for passage southward 
in the winter months of 1520. The sailors had to be out in all kinds of weather to shift the sail, and many times the ropes were frozen. After duty hours, they might have read mostly religious tracts. There were ship's musicians, perhaps, some gambling, a celebration when crossing the equator, and feast days, weather permitting. What food they had had to be salted down or pickled, and even their water had to be spiced up with a little wine, I guess, to get it down. That's a far cry from today. Would you like a twist of lemon with this, sir? Our Santa liners pick up giant shrimp in Panama, lobster in Valparaiso, and fresh fish and produce in practically every port in South America. After leaving Rio, the Straits would still be five months away. The days became colder and shorter yet. The temperament of his men matched the conditions. He suffered a mutiny and lost a ship to storm. For Magellan, it was treacherous sailing in that part of the world. Sheer cliffs and just come right by and look straight up at them, especially when we get up to the Patagonian canals. Do you find Very that? different. Very different, I will say, than any other part of the world that I've been. Cape Possession, Cape Possession, pilot station. This is the Santa Maria Kilo Alpha Foxtrot Charlie calling Cape Possession. We'd like to report that we should be at beam of Dungeon S at 20.30 hours, and we have the Chilean pilots ready to assume the con. Over. We carry two pilots. They're all captains, and they know the straits like the back of their hand. When you do get into the straits and you start through, there are so many entrances and exits uh, that you can look. You know, sometimes you wonder, is this the one to take? You know, it, but if you didn't have a navigational light and a, and a good pilot, I mean, one looks as good as the other, but uh, there is only one correct one that goes all the way through. Magellan moved further into the channel. It was first thought to be just another bay, then a river, then a deep water strait giving no hint of dwindling out. But when he got part way through, he told his uh, lieutenants, Jose, you take this one and you go up that channel, and Don, you take this other one, and then we'll all meet back here. Well, they would go up and explore, and I guess it took days, uh, maybe weeks, because they had to uh, tack against the wind, and it was all sailing. A month later, and they were still not halfway through to the Pacific. Only once during their passage did they contact the inhabitants of this land, Magellan called Tierra del Fuego. The log recalls their meeting. They were a stalwart people, upright and powerfully built. They were naked and their bodies glistened with a sheen of fish oil which protected them against the cold. He tried to communicate with them, but understood nothing. They spent the night on board ship and then mysteriously disappeared before morning's light. And is it very cold? I mean, is it... It's cold, but uh, we go up in there, we're sheltered with these yeah. big cliffs coming up on either side. And we follow this around until we're off of uh, Punta Arenas. And uh, Punta Arenas, a city of 100,000 people. From there, we will pass around Cape Froward. This is the southernmost point of the Americas. And uh, we are uh, 54 degrees south of the equator. We no longer head south. Now we're heading sort of a west-north-westerly direction. And we come up. And instead of going out Evangelista, which is the first passage, 
we continue up what we call the Patagonian oh, Canal. My, yeah, and we go up this, rather than going out into the ocean, mm -hmm. we stay inside in protected waters. We're about 350 miles inside. Oh. 38 days after moving into the deep water channel, zigzagging up and down the narrows, one of Magellan's small boats returned to the ship. The Captain General writes in his log, May the ocean always be as calm and benevolent as it is today. We are about to stand into an ocean where no ship has ever sailed before. The story of Magellan's discovery would not be reported for two years. The expedition would in the end cover over 40,000 miles, but Magellan would not see Seville again. Only 19 men and one ship would return from man's first journey around the world.